I think I sort of subconsciously knew that this was more than just fireworks anyway, but your initial initial reaction, not having been in anything like that before, is this is just a really bad set of fireworks going off. was very interested in doing a career um, where it involved helping the community, helping people. Um, so that was very much the primary focus. Uh, but also I wanted a job where I had I knew I would have variety, that I could come into work of a day and, um, and not necessarily know what the day held. Primarily I'm responsible for the, the building here, um, the maintenance of it, my, my staff here, um, their development. I think um, top of my list um, when I was very young were, was probably Egypt and Africa. Egypt for the pyramids, Africa for the animals and uh, the wildlife. I've travelled extensively throughout the world. I've been to the, the US and um, throughout Europe. Um, I've been through throughout um, large parts of Africa. Culture is the thing that attracts me uh, predominantly and the people you meet travelling. I wouldn't say that I, I have ever travelled looking over my shoulder or afraid that something's going to happen. I simply, I wouldn't travel if that was the case. In terms of any warnings um, to travel or not to travel to India, we didn't really think that uh, we would have any issue going to the areas that we were going to, particularly Varanasi, given it's the, you know, the holy city, uh, purported to be the holy city of India. The day the incident occurred was the 7th of December 2010 and uh, we'd been travelling for um, close to four weeks um, throughout Pakistan and India. That day we'd had a pretty normal day. We were uh, walking along that afternoon, late afternoon, along the Ganges and uh, looking at the various ghats along the Ganges. Before we did, we were sitting down um, next to two Canadian women who were on our um, right-hand side and we started chatting to them. and then. An Indian lady um, with a, a, ba a young child, about 12 months old, and what turned out to be the child's grandmother sat down on the step in front of us on the gat. And uh, so we got talking to them as well, and they didn't have any photos of the, the young child, so they asked, because we had good camera equipment, would we mind taking some photos ourselves and the um, Canadian women? <laughs> At about 6.26pm, um, um, we heard what initially sounded like fireworks. The bombing um, was in fact um, the fire what I thought initially was a fireworks going off. And um, all of a sudden I heard this absolute piercing, piercing sound, like fireworks going off. but. To this, it kept going to the extent that my ears, my eardrums felt like they were going to blow. It was and it became very painful. So I put my head down in my lap and I had a, my partner's polar fleece um, jacket and my own with me and my day pack and I put all of those over my head and then I started feeling my my head and arms being pelted with like felt like small rocks and I realised it was a bomb. Uh, one gentleman had his leg blown off and um, it turned out the little girl, the 12-month-old girl who we have taken photos of and were playing with before um, the ceremony was, was killed as well and she died in her mother's arms. But our first thought was to get back to the safety of our hotel. At that point I broke down completely and started, started sobbing and saying, you know, they've, they've, they've bombed us. From there we went back to the hotel room and uh, we realised that um, well, my partner particularly realised that he didn't want to stay in India any longer. He was also at that stage showing signs of trauma from um, from the bombing as well. So, um, and we're both very hyper vigilant, and that's something I think that must be very common to bombing victims: a hyper vigilance. You know, a door shuts um, loudly, and you, and you jump. You know, you your reactions are, are hypersensitive. I think it's made me more um, more aware, and particularly at um, you know, critical police incidents as well. Went to the MCG um, for the long walk, um, the indigenous, indigenous round at the MCG in a policing capacity. And again, the thought occurred to me then, you know, somebody could bomb the MCG. It was that thought that isn't necessarily a reasonable or rational thought, but I think it comes from that, you know, that event of the bombing, definitely. So I guess it's made me a bit more guarded in that sense and it it's, makes you a little bit more anxious in certain situations, whether you like it or not. Um, and I do think that that's responsible for it. Your 
personal sense of safety and your awareness um, changes. Um, again, it's not quite the hypervigilance, but I'm very alert at um, certain incidents. A few years down the track from the bombing, I find that um, I'm certainly no more traumatised. I would like to go back to the, the site of the bombing. Not quite sure what it is that draws me to wanting to go back there, but I think I would like to go back there. I was checking my emails and an email flashed up from the two women who were at the bombing next to us. Her and her friend had gone back to um, Varanasi because they were having great difficulty coping um, with the fact that the little girl died. So the family got the photos of the little girl and you know, I was sitting here at the computer that night on night shift, you know, in full uniform and the tears were rolling down my face. You know, I can feel the goosebumps sort of now as I talk about it. But for me, that was just amazing and it was, it gave me a sense of some sort of closure.